Everything must go, and soon there won't Fears be anything about left. How this loss reverberates. Retail across spending the dropped last month, accelerated a long-term decline from online stores. Redundancy. There's no denying that times are hard. The high street is a hugely important part of the UK. It's something that we've all grown up with. It's in our DNA as British people. Hello, my name's Catherine Shuttleworth. I run a business called Savvy, I'm the CEO, and I'm a retail expert. But the high street as we know it started in Victorian times. After the Industrial Revolution, the Victorians built high streets up and down the country, and the wealthy started to shop there and spend more time in high streets. And here are some of his majesty's the high streets became places to enjoy yourself, whereas before that they'd had a job to do in terms of marketplaces, which was the only place you could buy and sell goods. Whereas the Victorians, because they got you know wealth and a little bit more affluence, were able to start spending time buying things that they wanted and not just needed. The Brits have enjoyed shopping almost as a leisure pursuit for over a hundred years. I'm Ashley Armstrong, I'm The Sun's business editor. It's a good barometer of how the economy is generally doing. You know, when things are good, we see packed high streets, busy, bustling shops, and that kind of shows that everybody's chipper about how much money they've got in their wallets. But generally, it's been kind of a sliding scale and it's facing a number of competitions from all angles for the last few years. I think that the high street saw its heyday in the late 60s and the early 70s, where you started to see more car ownership, people able to drive into towns and cities, and you saw the growth of lots of different retailers, some of which we still see today, that started to populate high streets. And it was a real time of consumerism and the high street really, really took off. In department stores were huge, it was the place to go to, so it would be normal in a, a town or a city to have five, maybe six department stores. The local co-op would have a department store, at least one, maybe two. And there will be five floors of fantastic products, including restaurants in there, there would be cafes. You'd go and see Santa at the department store. You'd go there for your school shoes and your school uniform. And they would be really fantastic places to go shopping, where products that shoppers had never seen before suddenly started to appear. The high street continued to grow and it started to change, but then around the sort of the 90s, we saw the development of massive, great big, out of town pantheons of retail. These enormous shopping centres that were built on big swathes of land. And that started to be one of the first real challenges for the high street. Suddenly there was an alternative, there was somewhere else you could go to. At around the same time, also supermarkets started moving out of high streets. So that also meant that people weren't forced into the town centres anymore to do their weekly shop. They could go somewhere else to do that. And at the same time, the supermarkets, instead of just selling food and sticking to that, started to sell clothes. You know, Asda launched George, that was the first big play into clothing and it meant that you could do much more shopping in the supermarket. We think about kind of how big Tesco had become at one stage, you know, one pound in every four was being spent in Tesco, and that's because supermarkets weren't just selling you groceries anymore, they were selling everything. All of those independent players which you used to go to for, for new fridge, new freezer, new hi-fi, that was all replaced with supermarkets. And that combination of factors suddenly meant that the high streets that were traditionally the places you went to started to become somewhere else. At that point, I think we were at a, a, a very high peak in terms of, of retail sales. Home ownership was huge, younger people buying houses, people had a lot of money in their pockets, and so people were spending an awful lot in shops. Everywhere you look, the colour is red, and no one, it seems, can stop the bleeding. London opened, it was raw fear and panic. Share prices continued to tumble in the aftermath of the Lehman collapse. No one expects this bloodbath to end anytime soon. I guess we could really trace the, the wobbles that have been going on in the high street since the last financial crisis, what was called the credit crunch. Businesses had expanded and expanded and expanded. So these, some of these small specialists 
that had had half a dozen stores kept opening shops because at that stage the retail thinking was if you open a new shop customers will come your sales will increase go for growth and people kept going for growth and, and grew and grew and grew their businesses and that was across all sectors really so as they started to grow their costs increased the number of stores they had to look after increased and suddenly shoppers weren't visiting them anymore and their business models overnight were ripped up suddenly they couldn't support the number of stores they got the number of staff they got because the sales weren't coming in anymore and that was a real wake-up call so a number of those businesses then went and borrowed a lot of money uh, they were then servicing a bigger debt and that's why we saw so many retail businesses collapse because they could no longer pay back the debt due to expansion plans that had just gone too fast Woolworths disappeared off the high street very quickly but these were big names that people were used to seeing and suddenly the high street started to look a bit different and this big thing called the internet suddenly appeared. The internet started off quite slowly but suddenly it grew, it grew, it grew and then it exploded so that we were in a position where we could buy anything we wanted at any time from anywhere in the world and we were able to have that delivered to home. So there were less reasons suddenly to go to the high street and that put a lot of businesses under further pressure. And so if we think about it, the likes of ASOS, the likes of Amazon, at the time when people were feeling a bit skint and not having as much money to spend in the shops, then people were starting to get into online shopping. And ever since, there's been a bit of a battleground about where you're going to be spending your money. And that continued and continued and it hit its peak really in the pandemic. The high street and the whole retail sector really had a huge reckoning during the pandemic. After all, for hundreds of years, these shops had been allowed to open and trade and suddenly lockdowns meant that their stores were shut. No retailer in the world had planned for their shops to be closed permanently. And overnight, shops closed, with the exception, obviously, of, of, of food businesses, um, and just were unable to trade. They just couldn't trade at all. And so there was like a very forced shift to online shopping. Uh, there was nowhere else to buy anything. And so we saw the online share of market go from, it had been trailing around about 20% for non-food and only 7% for food groceries because people still like to do their weekly shop at a supermarket. Instead, almost overnight, there was a huge demand for deliveries. So on food, it was shot up to 14% and on clothing and fashion and furniture, it went all the way up to 65%, very dizzying heights. The pandemic, I think when we look back in it, was such an unusual period of time, because you know it wasn't just that the shop shut, we didn't have anything to do, we weren't going to school, we weren't going to work really, um, but because of the furlough scheme, people still had money in their pocket, they still had money to spend. So we did, we went on a summer of massive spending, but that was online. There's a huge chunk of money that has never come back to the high street or physical shopping because people have got so used to buying online now. And that is something that isn't ever going to really go back to exactly where it was. And that, you know, for the retail industry, has sent a shiver and a chill through them that I don't think they'll ever recover from. That, you know, suddenly people could do without you completely. Um, and you could still trade with them, you could still have commerce with them but you really didn't need shops, you, you could survive. You look at the big names that we've seen disappear, at British home stores, every town had a British home stores. Look at Debenhams, you know, Debenhams was a major part of the UK's retail scene. House of Fraser were the same. Arcadia, which housed everything from Topshop to Dorothy Perkins and Wallace and Burton. And then most recently we've had Wilco collapse. While they've all had their own problems, there's been an overarching trend, which tends to be a lack of investment and um, failure to see how the retail landscape is changing. Uh, if we've seen BHS and Debenhams, both once owned by Sir Philip Green, there had been a lot of attention placed on the, the hero brand of Topshop money had been spent on that and there'd been an ambitious international rollout but uh, Tycoon failed to kind of really appreciate that shift to online and the stores became tired, they became underinvested, and didn't keep up with trends enough and that ended up being its undoing. 
You could also kind of draw a parallel to the amount of money that Sir Philip Green had taken out from the business through his family dividends, which were in the billions and therefore kind of meant that there weren't, wasn't enough financial resilience within the company to really invest and splash out the money where it was needed. Wilco should have done well because it was a value retailer, but it didn't keep up with the competition. So you saw the likes of B&M bargains and Poundland really moving in and undercutting on price and offering something else. Uh, and Debenhams, Debenhams was really held up as a sad case of a department store. It was always on sale. And I think that's one of the problems that retailers get into the habit of, of using clearance sales and discounts to drive shoppers into the stores. It's a really, really tricky cycle to get out of. And that's something that the high street has really struggled with ever since almost 2008, when it was having to flog a lot of goods at half price or more to get to stimulate demand. High streets have got to be reimagined by the people who live in those high streets. We're seeing everything from these big old shopping centres being turned into um, pharmaceutical laboratories. There's also a lot of leisure opportunities, so we're seeing things like crazy golf or trampolining. So it is quite interesting because we don't know how permanent that will be, but it seems like the high streets are needing to reflect what we really want these days. So where you've seen real successes where spaces have been repurposed, independents are moving in there and that might also have a mixture of art and creativity in it not just shops um, it's going to have maybe new food offers different kind of independent cafes and restaurants and emerging talent in towns and what we're seeing is that's what people want to do they're, they're happy to go into town centres enjoy that kind of experience they're not expecting it to always be full of retail <laughs>